The Regional Arts Development Fund helps Fraser Coast artists to tell their stories, to tell the stories of our community. And I'm really pleased that one of the recent projects come out of the RADF grants is the Maribor Storyteller, also known as Ian Brown, his new ebook covering the stories of Maribor. Maribor is an amazing city full of stories, and the Maribor Storyteller is doing a fantastic job in bringing these stories from previous generations to life. To get a copy of the ebook, go to Amazon or the Maribor Storyteller Facebook page. Well, my name's Ian Brown. I'm the Maribor Storyteller. This story I'm about to read is called um, For Whom the Bells Toll. There was once a man called Edgar Aldridge who arrived here not long after the first European settler, George Thurber. Edgar Aldridge, along with Henry Palmer, arrived the very next year, 1848, and set up on the opposite bank, the north side, the site we know today as the old Wide Bay Village. This is the technicality, along with Thurber's death soon after at the hands of the original inhabitants, upon which is built the myth of Aldridge being the first resident of this township. Edgar Aldridge is, however, the town's first publican, establishing the Bush Inn shortly after he arrives, but only just ahead of the inns of Henry Palmer, Thurber and Ricketts. Edgar's father had been a brewer and a cooper in the old country, which probably familiarised him with the sale of spirituous liquors and the like. In those first years here at the frontier, Edgar's customers are mostly timber getters, sawyers, the men who worked with the sheep on the properties to the west, and the bullockies who bring in the wool clip, all of them quite partial to a little spree. And it should be at it would be Edgar Aldridge who would furnish for these fellows what we might call a rum do and all of them could tell a tale or two of the wild colonial frontier, of the so-called treacherous blacks, the innumerable vicissitudes and dangers which constantly attends their lives here. But it will be Edgar Aldridge, above all others, whose star will ascend and shine so brightly for many years to come. Now, Edgar Aldridge had a wife called Maria, born to a young teenage mother and given up to the parish to be raised as an orphan. Maria's early years are spent unwanted and unloved. Required to leave the orphanage at 12 when she is considered of working age, she sells buttons on the streets of Birmingham and lives in a derelict wharf. At 17 she is charged with stealing two bags of coal and is sentenced to transportation to Australia for seven years. Towards the end of her sentence, which she undertakes as an assigned servant, she makes an application to marry a man whose child she is already carrying. What becomes of the father is not known, but the child, Frederick Augustus Slater, born in 1842, will still be with Maria when she begins working as a housekeeper for Edgar Aldridge in Kempsey. Edgar is 29 and Maria is 26. Before long, love blossoms and they are married. Very soon after, a daughter is born called Maria Rachel for her mother. No doubt eager to secure a future for his new family, Edgar sets out scouting for opportunities at the frontier here in the north. And back in Kempsey, another child is born, a son. Harry Edgar. So it is to the old Wide Bay village where he had set up his tavern that Edgar brings his wife and young family and begins a new life. And here, where the new town is set out in the new world, he prospers. For Edgar acquires a lot of land. In fact, he owns more land here than any other. In the first land sale for the new town here in 1852, Edgar buys the most, and over the years he owns a total of 99 town blocks, or some 373 acres, of the central township. Future suburban blocks are bought by the acre. He also takes grazing leases over most of the land between here and the coast to the north and establishes stations called Tugum 
to be managed by his stepson, Fred Slater, and Burrell for his son, Harry, when he came of age, and Harry's Aboriginal wife, Lappy Tenna. The new world, it seems, will see new bloodlines forming. Perhaps Harry got his inspiration for unconventional marriage from his father, who, after all, had married a convict woman in a time when the convict stain was not well looked upon by other free settlers. Although there is no reason to believe even their children knew of Maria's convict past. Nor might their fellow settlers have been privy to the fact that Edgar and Maria's daughter, Maria Rachel, would marry her first cousin, Frederick Bryant, who was Edgar's sister's son, and who had come out to Australia to help his uncle build his empire. Frederick would go on to be mayor five times, but that's another story. Edgar's first business venture, the Bush Inn at the Old Village, is soon relocated here to the new town and extended, eventually becoming the Royal Hotel that would later on be sold to Richard Hine in the mid-1870s. Tragically, Maria's son, Frederick Slater, is found dead in his bed at Burrell, aged just 34, in 1876. But by this time, Edgar Aldridge is the most important man in town, whose financial might is respected. He donates land on which the Church of England here, St Paul's, is founded and subscribes generously to the erection of the building. If the people of the town do know about his convict wife and her bastard child, or have strong opinions about how his son has married into the old people of this place, or how his daughter had married her first cousin, or even his growing reputation as a litigious and ruthless landlord, such things are not talked about openly, and Edgar is publicly accorded the respect he is due as a civic-minded benefactor. He builds a grand house for Maria that stands to this day and calls it Baddo House for the village in England where he was born. Sadly, about this time, Maria's health begins to decline and she spends more and more time taking the sea air with her son and daughter-in-law at Burrell. Not long after St Paul's is complete, Maria Aldridge dies, aged 65. Edgar is devastated and begins to look for ways to commemorate his journey from the old world to the new and the forging of new ways from the old. In Maria's memory, he not only commissions and pays for the erection of St Thomas's Church of England over in Newtown, but also the massive bell tower, the first in Maryborough that dwarfs its parent church, St Paul's. Nine bells are cast in England and shipped here. The smallest is one foot nine inches in diameter and the largest is four foot four inches and weighs over 1,000 kilograms. Each bell is inscribed to the glory of God and the memory of Mrs. Maria Aldrich. They first ring out on Easter Day, April 1, 1888 told by a team of bell ringers brought from Sydney. Just six weeks later, after 40 years here, Edgar himself also dies aged 71. Although he was not the first resident herein, as his tombstone out at the cemetery proclaims, he was a man with an understanding of the importance of the memorials we leave behind, of what they say about us, and what we find meaningful. That bell tower might also say, like Ozymandias, look upon my works, ye mighty, and remember my wife. For when those bells ring, we need not ask, for whom do those bells toll? For Edgar Aldrich has made sure we remember his great love, Maria with her name ringing truly across this landscape from their day here to ours. Thanks for listening.